and just soldering uh, the surface mount leads onto this light board that I made up which is just a uh, printed circuit board that should be right, I'll just test this and then I'm right okay, yep okay, so we've got three surface mount leads there and what we'll, we're talking about is the uh, FL4 Dakota and people are asking about um, the black and white stripe uh, and what it does and how you can connect this up so I'll show you okay let's come down here and we'll look at what we've got there's, there's my testing leads one two three four I'll turn those on and off so that's what I've done there with those using resistors to the leads you always got to have a resistor I always use the colored wire going off to the uh, to the resistor and then to the uh, lead and the common blue which is the positive now the black and white is the negative okay you know a battery you got a positive and a negative to get a, um, a battery globe to um, work the same principles here you got the positive and the negative now what I've done here now is I'm using my NCE system what I just come out a bit so turning all the lights on and off using the NCE system if I take the power off that's gone straight away back on again and I'll put three We'll put the four on. So if I let go of the um, the DCC coming into the Dakota on the red or the black, I take that off. It's gone. Now we don't solder with the Dakota on. So if I just solder this blue wire here, fingers out of the way, so you can see what I'm doing. Just put that on there. This is the uh, a KA3 or Keep Alive for TCSL. Very good. Now we connect back up again. Get the black to black, and the red to red. Doesn't really matter. You can have them the other way. Now I've soldered the uh, keep alive. It's a KA3 in this case. I've got the globe on there, so that we we take that off, take the power off, and we look one two, three, four, five, we'll put a lot of them on, there's the four of them on now, just give this time to charge up, and then when we disconnect the power, there's no power there now, and there's your keep alive, keeping the lights going in your coach or whatever else that you want, your locomotive, but for the TGS FL4, there's a little decoder there. I use lots of these. They're great. And they're still off. Look at the length of time that this is. I'll take the other one off just so you know. There's your two black. Look, uh, black and red. That's still going. That, Those KA3s, absolutely magnificent. If you want to make your own... Um, is the uh, sketch I've done so you can see uh, how you make uh, four diodes we'll get those little diodes there these fellas and we'll make this bridge rectifier and uh, that will convert the DC coming in which is actually AC power not DC and we'll convert that to DC power and then when we come off this is where we're going to put the capacitor in and what I've done is I've got a capacitor here and this is a 1000 microfarad 25 volt if you use 16 volt you run a risk of um, of a uh, short causing a problem but 25 volts you're going to be very safe they get 25 volts and a thousand microfarad that's not a really big one and you'll be able to hide that in a um, a coach in a toilet or something like that so we'll show you how we do that 
Okay, there's the first stage. You can see the, the stripe on these. They're like a check valve. They only let the, uh, the flow go through one way. So the flow is this way. And you're looking at that drawing there again. So we've got the flow coming this way. So that's the first part. Now we'll just join up these uh, these together and that'll be the bridge rectifier. And I'll do that when I've got the camera in front of me. I'll just make a there's only a test one so One there. Make that look good. So, explaining this to you there now, you can see the stripes on those. We've got the AC comes in. Doesn't matter which wire from the from the DCC that's coming in goes to that one and that one's, and then the DC out. That will be the uh, the ground or the negative, and that one there will be the positive. So positive and negative, and DC DC. Okay, you can see we've got the lead on. All we're doing is we've got track power coming in there, which is DCC track power. That's coming in to the two outside uh, of the uh, bridge rectifier. And then we've got the white, which is the ground, or the negative, which is DC now. We've converted, uh, using the bridge rectifier, we've converted AC into DC. And the white is going off to the... the you see what we've done there. I've just jump, jumped that capacitor. 1000 microfarad capacitor in and that's going over to the resistor I always use the uh, negative for the resistor and um, then from the positive output DC we've got the jumper wire going into the capacitor so the capacitor is sitting um, in line uh, storing up power and let me just come back out here a bit and I'll take this power off and we'll just see how long the lead lasts for. Okay. Okay, so that's off. There's the lead still on. Still on. Still on. And still there. Just gone now. That's enough to stop fire, uh, flicker in a caboose or a, uh, or a coach, etc. So you can make your own. But the other option, of course, is using the uh, TCS Keeper Lives. They've got several different ones that you can have, different sizes. KA2 is even smaller. Um, um, it's your choice. There's my uh, light board. I've just got a 1K resistor on it there. So they're all in series. Those three are in series. Now each of those LEDs is pulling about, um, about 20 milliamps, 20, 40, 60 milliamps. The circuit of each one of these is going to take um, 100 milliamps easily. So... Uh, but you look at the voltage, different LEDs have got different voltages that they pull. So I allow about 3.3 3 .3 volts on these wires, so 3, 6, 9.9. .9. Now if I put another one in there, that's going to be over 12 volts. When you're over 12 volts, which is the output from the, uh, from the decoder function, you're not going to run four LEDs successfully unless you drop the, the resistor value down. You can do it there that way. But three is enough, and you could run three, and then another three, on, and that even off the same function, uh, with two, make two of these light boards up. The pink goes to this resistor, and the pink goes to another resistor with another three on it. You can do it that way, without uh, getting overloading. But be careful with that. So there we go. There's the um, turn the lights on and off, and these ones down here. Turn those on and off. So either using a keep alive or you make your own bridge rectifier and a uh, standard capacitor 
um, you can do it there that way. You can use surface mount diodes as well uh, to keep down the size. Um, that's that's not that hard to do. Or you can actually buy surface mount um, bridge rectifiers, and that'll save you space inside your coach. So I hope that helps. Oh, one other thing, I go to Michaels and that in the US, and I buy these little fancy um, things for putting in coaches. You can put those over your lights and uh, inside your coach and they make them look pretty neat just something like a ornamental um, light uh, covers so you go buy those in different sizes and put those in the coaches for that old era look and you might be wondering about this um, light board that I've made here all I've done is I've put four tower LEDs together uh, and a resistor to each one of them and another resistor here is uh, a 100 ohm resistor. You can use this for programming uh, uh, these um, for when I do some of my animation work. So it's just a handy little uh, test tool to have, along with uh, lead tester and other things there to make life uh, easier so you don't have problems when you're doing installs. I've just swapped the green wire over onto uh, my little motor, these are animation motors that I use, so um, you can see how I get the uh, using FL decoders. I'll just hold this. So I'm using TCS FL decoders to actually drive motors, and that with a little circuit that I've got here. Um, that's my other YouTube show, all of that. But yeah, you can turn that on and off, and that's how I get my bells working. Or I get my fireman shoveling coal, just being able to turn those on and off, which is just simple on and off. F1 is green, default. Uh, I've done a lot with the FL decoders and the lighting functions that they've got there. I mean, if you want to set, I mean, that's still on there now. If I wanted to set those onto uh, on the flicker, we pull out the chart, and we go. Uh, the pink wire is CV54. So, so let, I want to go and program. Let's come out a bit here. I want to program on the main. Yep. And I want to program decoder O3. Yep. And I want to do two, the CV. And the CV number that I want is 54. There we go, 5, 4, we enter, and now we want to enter a value in there. If we want to put those lights on flicker, let's just say we go to, um, uh, what have we got there? Constant dim auto, ditch lights, flashing lights. Random flicker is 33, 33, enter, there you go, there they are flickering. It's, these are so easy to program these decoders uh, uh, just and the uh, lighting options that the uh, TCS have got it's terrific same on the wow decoders exactly the same lighting with all the um, light functions and things that you can possibly do or want so there you go I hope uh, I hope that that sort of helped you out to understand how you can get a FL decoder with an FL2 or an FL4 to get uh, uh, the uh, stay alive, keep alive, whatever you want to call it, make your own or you buy the TCS product and, and fit it in.